Hey everybody, welcome to the Tim Cross Electronics YouTube channel. We're going to be starting a brand new series today. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I have no idea what we're going to end up with. Hopefully it'll be, you know, worth keeping. I've always wanted to, uh, to build a tube preamp pedal. What I had in mind for this is um, something like a, a British kind of mid-gain type preamp. And there are two particular amplifiers that I really like the sound of. One of them is the, the Bogner Ecstasy, the Blue Channel, and the Buddha Superdrive 80. They're both kind of in the same vein, but they definitely each have their own voice too. And so I want something that kind of captures both of those. So I'm going to build that into this chassis. A couple of the big design objectives that I have for this are it needs to be channel switching, so I want to have a rhythm channel and a lead channel, and I want to have a, a boost that, that I can use on either one of those channels, a separate boost control for, for each channel. Why not build something where I can just skip the amp entirely and just run straight from my preamp pedal to the board? So I want to build a really nice sounding speaker emulator into it. So now let's take a look at the schematic we're going to be working from. Okay, so this is our first schematic. This is coming from a Buddha Superdrive 80 preamp. And I want to point out just a couple of things that kind of help to shape this preamp and, and give the Buddha Superdrive 80 its sound. First of all, we see here we've got a 220k plate resistor and another 220k plate resistor there. But they have, they've doubled the, um, the cathode resistor there. Uh, they've more than doubled the cathode resistor there, so it's actually not giving us any more gain than what we would normally see with a 100k plate resistor and a 1.5k cathode resistor. I think this has more to do with the feel of the amplifier than gain. Also, because this is a relatively high value of 4.7k, 4.7k divided by 2.2, so that's roughly the equivalent of a 2.13k or 2.14k resistor. Uh, 2.2k. Um, if you if you were using a um, 100k plate resistor, so it's ever so slightly cold biased. Not a lot, but you know sometimes it doesn't take a whole lot. Also notice this right here. This bright cap is a 0.001 with a 470k resistor. What you would normally see in a Marshall is a 4, 470k and a 470 pico cap there. So that's going to give us a little more of the high mids in there, probably. They're actually using a 220 picofarad treble cap. The slope resistor is a little bit higher. It's like from here down, it's a you know classic Marshall design. So here's the Bogner, Bogner, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. The Bogner Ecstasy Blue Channel Schematic. It's a modified Marshall preamplifier. In fact, if you look at the tone stack here, this is part for part a Marshall tone stack. Going back to the input stage here, we've got our typical 820 ohm resistor, which is hot biasing that stage in the 0.68 bypass uh, capacitor. Um, this is a little bit smaller, this is 0.047. This path down here, the lower gain path, this is their, their plexi mode. The top uh, half of the switch here, you've got an extra gain stage, and again a 470 pico over 470k. Okay, so this is the schematic that I came up with more than a year ago. I never did anything with it. This was basically me just kind of trying a couple different ideas. I wanted to combine these two preamps and be able to get 90% of the sound of one and flip a switch and kind of capture 90% of the sound of the other. The two preamps are very similar, but they do have their own unique character. So there are a couple of things about this schematic that I'm not real crazy about. Again, it was just kind of getting some ideas down. I'm going to change a few things here. I'm going to make this uh, a little bit more practical for what we're doing. And there are just a couple of things here that I'd like to clean up and change.
Okay, so here's what we've ended up with. The first thing your guitar signal sees is going to be this MOSFET boost stage. Typically when you see this arrangement you'll see a 3.3k resistor on top and bottom, but I've used 4.7k just to increase the negative feedback. That allows us to, uh, to get a larger amount of boost when we switch in, in and out. This is actually one of the relay switches here, so it'll switch between a 4.7 microfarad capacitor and a 22 microfarad capacitor. On the lead channel, I want to be able to cut a little bit more of the low end off just to keep things nice and tight and avoid any uh, blocking distortion. When I apply a negative voltage to the base of this transistor, um, it's going to switch it switch the transistor so that allows me to turn the boost on and off and then again depending on on which channel I've selected there's this relay will determine which channel is connected to ground if I'm on my rhythm channel and I want just a little bit of a boost I can do that while at the same time being able to switch over to my lead channel and have a really big boost if I need it because obviously the more gain you've got the more boost you're gonna need at the front end to really hear any difference so going on from there we've got our first tube stage and the same thing is happening here the bypass capacitor is here uh, this 0.47 is the uh, Buddha super drive value the 0.68 is the the ecstasy blue channel value and then when we select our rhythm channel the negative voltage will be applied here and we select our lead channel the negative voltage will be applied here and then depending on which voice we've selected for the lead channel this this will be switched over. Coming over through a 0.022 capacitor, there is not an additional capacitor in series with that for our rhythm channel. Um, I didn't want to uh, uh, cut any more bass off than that for our rhythm channel. And then just a small bright cap, uh, another small bright cap here. Uh, if we switch over to our lead channel, the 0.0047 will be in series with this 0.022, which it's not gonna make a huge difference. Um, this 680 picofarad bright capacitor here is kind of a compromise between the two amplifiers because the Buddha used a 0 .001, the Bogner uses a, a 470 picofarad capacitor. So this is just somewhere in between there. This I meant to change. This uh, 470 picofarad capacitor, we're going to change that to a 220. That was you. That's that came over from the the Bogner schematic. And again, the Bogner uses a 470 pico right here. So using that larger capacitor and a 470 pico bright cap on the on the gain control, I think is going to give us just way too much high end, especially as we turn the gain down. 4.7k, as we talked about earlier, with the oh, this is a 100k. Yeah, that's wrong. That's supposed to be a 220k. There we go. From there. Um, our switch determines whether we're going through our, our rhythm channel here or our lead channel here into this cold biased stage with the uh, the 10k uh, cathode resistor and notice no bypass capacitor on this one. This resistor here, normally what you're going to see is a 100k resistor on the, capa the uh, cathode of the cathode follower. I may end up changing this back. The reason that I went down to a 68k is because it gives us a little bit more of that soft clipping that we get from a cathode follower. The lower that resistance is, the more the cathode follower itself is going to clip, and, and that soft clipping is kind of part of the marshall -y sound, um, especially in some of the higher gain topologies. So I'm going to leave that for now, but we may end up going back up to 100k for that. I really don't know. I've never heard what it sounds like using a, a lower value resistor there. If this is not switched in, we've got our 220 pico treble cap, which is the value that's used on the Buddha. If we switch in an additional 250 picos, we're at 470, which is the value from the Bogner. Same thing here, if we leave it on the 56k and don't switch in this extra 100k, that's our, our Buddha value. Switching in the 100k drops that down a little bit to our Bogner value. Uh, 250k treble, 500k bass, and 25k mid pass, or a mid uh, pot. Uh, just like we saw in both of those. And then this is just here to prevent popping when, when this is switched in and out. Although. I don't need that, do I? No, yes I do, because it's here, it's to prevent popping when I switch this capacitor in and out. Okay, so I do need that. From there, we go to our casco. Now, 
I like cast codes. I think they're really cool because they have the, the transfer curve is much more like a pentode than like a triode. Um, I've actually used them as the, the input stage of guitar amps, but when you do that, you don't get the distortion characteristic of a, of a pentode. Uh, the reason that I used it in, in, um, in my amp was because I had an extra triode and I, I just didn't want to have it hanging there and not use it for anything because it just seems like a waste. Plus, cast codes are really good for driving tone stacks and in that amplifier I had a tone stack uh, directly after the, the, the first gain stage. So, I have used it before but I've never used it this way. We're going to hopefully get some power amp-like distortion off of this. Now, I know it's not going to be exact because the inefficiencies of the transformer um, kind of create a, a, an extra warmth that we're not going to have here because we're not going through an output transformer. However, I think just the fact that this has the transfer curves uh, that are very similar to a pentode should give us some interesting results. When we switch channels between our rhythm lead channel, we're going to be switching between these two master volumes for those channels. And then after that, there is a master master volume so that you don't have to adjust both your, your rhythm channel and lead channel volumes independently and, and you know try to get them balanced again. That again, I may end up tossing, but yeah, it seems useful. So from there, it goes on to our IRF820, which is a high-voltage MOSFET, and uh, we're just using it as, um, as a buffer here, and that's what we're going to use to send our signal out to our power amp or the input of an amplifier, whatever we end up doing with it. Um, I'm not finished with the, the power supply section here, be here because I haven't added uh, power supply rails for our speaker emulator, which we will be adding at some point, but I'm not going to add that yet because I want to make sure that all of this is the way we want it to sound first, and then I'm getting, yeah, you can see at the bottom of the screen here, I've got some stuff in here for uh, switching. Uh, let's ignore that for now. Once we've got this uh, circuit nailed down in, in, as far as just the tone and, and functionality, then we'll start working on the switching circuit and our speaker emulated output. And I actually have a circuit board that I've already made for the speaker emulator, and I may be able to, to use that, but I'll probably end up doing some modifications to that. Okay, so now that we've got our schematic done, the next step is we've got to order all of our parts, and then we're going to have to work on laying everything out inside that enclosure. And I, that's going to be a challenge, because we've got a lot of stuff to cram into that small enclosure. Uh, not only do we have to fit the switches and knobs and the power supply and transformer and tube sockets, but we've also got to leave enough room for an additional circuit board at the back where we've got our speaker emulator and all the outputs from that. So that will be a bit of a challenge. Uh, we're going to work on that next time. Uh, thank you for joining us this time. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out all of our product videos also on this channel and visit us online at www.timkelectronics.com. We've got some great pedals for sale there and more products to come.